Welcome back to part four of the uh, Goldfield Scrap Refining Series here. I'm going to pull these silver jars up and look and see what we got in here. These have been cementing now for a couple days. And uh, there's not a whole lot of silver down there in the bottom. A little bit, but not much. Uh, when we put these metals, when we get them out of solution, and we uh, try to take a look at them, they normally look like there's a lot more than we think when they're in the beaker. And then when we get them down and actually look at them, there's a lot less than we are expecting. And this has got a little bit more into it. The last solution that I filtered uh, back in part three, there was a leftover solution in a filter flask and I added it to this beaker to cement any metals out. And uh, you can see here that there is a little bit of silver down the bottom. Now we're going to set this aside, get it out of the way. Here's our uh, gold foils that we have dissolved. Everything is in solution. It's got some sediment underneath of it, and I don't want to disturb that. There's some uh, stuff settled out down here. So what I'm going to do is I've got a vacuum flask set up. And I'm going to set this, uh, get this tubing hooked up here. We're going to draw off the uh, gold bearing solution in our flask here and collect it in this flask. Here we go. We're going to draw this off now. the outlet pipe here where the vacuum connection is they got sucked up into the uh, vacuum line luckily none of it made it uphill to the uh, vacuum pump area so now all I got to do here is take this flask apart and uh, we'll rinse it all out clean it all up no harm done no metal lost Mishaps happen here. 
for those people thinking about doing this kind of stuff themselves, you can watch and learn what not to do when it comes time to perform these operations like I am here. Rinse the flask out now into this beaker. All I'm really trying to do is get the solution out of this beaker down here without disturbing the sediment. This is not going to be high purity gold. Get all this rinse out of here. We'll go to the next step. of gold solution off of everything and then what I'll do is I'll keep this piece of paper and throw it into my uh, into my uh, paper storage and it'll get processed when we uh, burn the filters got everything all cleaned up now Tried to get fancy on you there, and I should have just went with a uh, routine setup here. Make sure that the pipe in here goes below the arm for the vacuum connection, so we don't splash none of our liquid into this uh, vacuum pipe here. Okay, here we go. We're gonna finish this up. I got a fine tip on this one, so it doesn't draw the solution up as quickly. And uh, this should go much better. Should have had this set up in the first place. I needed a one liter flask and I did not have the proper stopper size for a one liter flask. That's why I tried to use the flask with the ground glass stopper. All right, we got that drawn off. Now what we'll do here is uh, take a look at what we got in here. All right, let's take a look and see what we got in here. It looks like there is some solid pieces still in there. This one looks like it's maybe passivated with uh, silver chloride. What we'll do is I'm going to put this into a filter and get the rest of the solution off. And then maybe we'll hit the uh, rest of this solids inside this beaker with some more aqua region. I prepared one of my special filters here. What we're going to do now is try to filter the rest of this solution into this flask. that we were drawing off these may be some pieces of carrot gold in here take that out and take a look at that this is about an hour and a half worth of footage time lapsed and speeded up liquids recovered now got the bulk of the solution in this flask 
and then I've got some more of it back here in this beaker. Now what we're going to do, I'm going to set this aside, and what I think the next course of action should be, put this back in the flask there. Might be some solid pieces of metal left in here. So I'm going to put this back in the flask. And now I'm going to uh, add a little bit of hydrochloric acid. And then uh, cover it up, put it up here in the heat. We're going to try to form some more aqua region here and see if we can extract some more metal out of those pieces. Now I'm going to add some uh, concentrated nitric in here, about six milliliters or so, and we'll do another extraction. Let's put tin in. Nine milliliters actually. I will let this react for a while. All right, let's pull our solution up here. This is going to have our gold in it. And what we're going to do here is uh, rinse everything into this single beaker right here. Get this back out of the way. Next, we're going to pour this solution in. So we got all of our solution in one spot. our gold bearing solution. Gonna add a little bit of sulfuric acid to precipitate out any lead. Uh, gold filled scrap is notorious for containing soft solder which contains lead. Now what we'll do stir this up. Set this back out of the way. filter flask here got my vacuum pump running I'm gonna add a filter to our filter flask dampen it with a little bit of distilled water now we're gonna bring our gold solution up here and run this filter get all the solids filtered out of it Took about 45 minutes to pull that solution through that filter, time lapsed, and speed it up. What I'm going to do here is uh, turn the vacuum off now, let this set. I'm going to add some more nitric to the contents of this beaker back here and let it cook for a little longer and then once it uh, stops reacting what I'll do is uh, swap this funnel into a different flask and then we'll pour the contents solution out of this beaker through this funnel 
pull everything through here. It's already loaded up, so it will do a good job of getting all the fine particulate out of this solution. We've had this uh, second extraction on boiling now for about 45 minutes. I'm gonna add a little bit of nitric acid, see what kind of reaction we get here. There's a large quantity of very fine particulate in that uh, solution, so it's going to take quite a while to pull all that solution through that filter. So we'll get this all into this funnel here. Get it all filtered out. Then we'll add it to the main batch go for precipitation. We're on the home stretch now. This is about two hours of footage on time lapse and speed it up eight times normal speed. All right, here's what's left in the filter. Uh, what we'll do is I'm going to rinse this now with a little bit of distilled water so we can get the rest of the gold solution that might be present move down into our solution in the flask and then once I get all this uh, liquid pulled through we'll uh, combine the two solutions this one and this one large beaker and then we'll go for precipitation here we go I've got everything all set up so that hopefully I can do this whole thing in one take 
here is our uh, material in the funnel. Just mostly looks like non-gold material. I'll add this to my paper storage. Now what we'll do is I've got a big beaker. I'm going to do this reaction. Get a big beaker here. Should have about 1.5 liters of solution with gold in it. I'm going to add this flask in. And now we'll add the other. solution in here. I think I'm expecting probably about 40 grams of pure gold from this. Might be a little bit more, might be a little less. There's some sediment going in. It's all right because we'll do another refining to get all this uh, all this other junk out that's in here want to follow it I'm still in the recovery phase here more or less all right we've got all our solution in the beaker now we're going to go for precipitation now let me do this first let me just verify that we got gold in solution get a little on a piece of filter paper here test it with stannis just to show you nothing worse than doing all this work and then going to precipitate and you get nothing. Right there you can see that black stain means I've got plenty of gold in solution. So now what we'll do, is I'm gonna adjust the camera angle here. Show you the precipitation. We're using sodium metabisulfite to do the precipitation. Here we go. spoon going in. I see a little bit of brown forming down here, brown gold down here on the bottom. It's coming out of solution nicely. It's hard to see because we've got a dirty solution. It's got base metals in there. That's inevitable when we're working with gold-filled scrap. <clears throat> what we'll do is, uh, once we get the gold powder precipitated here, we'll get it out of that green solution and then do another refining on it. Been settling for about uh, 20, 25 minutes. I'm gonna reach in here with a piece of filter paper, do a status test on this uh, waste solution, see if we got any uh, gold remaining in solution. And as you can see by that status test, Got a little tint of color to it. Might be some platinum metals present, but we've got all the gold out of our solution. Our solution has been allowed to settle completely. Now what I'm going to do is hook up the vacuum line to my bottle here. I'm going to reach in there and draw the waste solution from the gold. Here we go. If I accidentally draw any of the gold up out of that beaker and it gets in my flask, that's okay. It's going into my stock pot. Got 
that uh, waste solution off of our gold. Take my rig out of the way here. I've got a filter set up in a funnel. What we'll do now is capture the gold from the beaker in this filter. You get a good camera angle on this if I can here. Recovered gold. All right, here's our gold in the funnel, and it looks to be a respectable amount of gold there. So, uh of course, it always looks like it's more in this state because it's in a uh, finely divided state and more voluminous than if it was melted into a bar. All right, the solution is drained off of there now. I'm going to add a little hydrochloric acid to the gold to rinse it out. Hydrochloric acid does a better job of rinsing dissolved metals out of our gold powder than just plain water. This is a nice quantity of gold here. This is gonna, uh, it's probably gonna be a little bit more than I was uh, expecting. You can see the yellow color on the filter. This is dissolved metals that appear when the uh, hydrochloric acid is added to rinse the gold. Solution coming out of the funnel is a little bit of a yellow colored. That's dissolved metals being rinsed out of our gold. Like I said, hydrochloric acid does a much better job of rinsing dissolved metals out of our gold powder than just plain water would do for us. I've got it rinsed off now. I'm going to transfer our gold in the filter paper and back into the beaker that I rinsed out real good and it came from. And now what we'll do is add some hydrochloric acid, about uh, 250 milliliters or thereabouts. And before we go any further, I've got some uh, sulfuric acid here. So what I'll do is add a few drops of sulfuric acid just to make sure we don't have any lead in here. And then I'm gonna put this up on the heat. Start adding small doses nitric acid to get everything to go back into solution. Nitric acid, I'm going to add about, uh, I don't know, maybe 15 milliliters. Let's do that. That's, one, that's three, six, nine, 15. Now we'll just let this react. The filter paper will completely disintegrate and aid us when we filter out all the solids out of this solution. Looks like we got a little bit of uh, gold left down in the bottom down there. So what I'm going to do 
do. Let's add another squirt of nitric acid here. See if we can get everything dissolved. Probably react pretty vigorously here. A little hot. to cool to room temperature what we're gonna do is uh, filter it out now I've got a slow flow number three filter in this filter flask and now we're gonna filter our gold solution so we can precipitate it one more time. Most of the um, solid material on the bottom of the beaker is the filter paper that disintegrated. Uh, there's couple of pieces of undissolved gold down in the bottom of the beaker and uh, that's okay I, I'm not gonna go after those I'd rather see that and know for sure that I will not have to deal with any uh, excess nitric in my gold solution undissolved gold. I put them in the uh, beaker here, added some hydrochloric acid. Now I'm going to add a little bit of nitric, get the rest of this stuff to dissolve. Just drop some time here. Get the rest of these little pieces of gold to dissolve. By adding small doses of nitric acid, a little bit at a time, until all the gold just dissolves, we're able to carefully control the amount of nitric acid going into the reaction, and then we won't have to worry about having excess nitric acid that needs to be neutralized before we precipitate the gold. No need to add urea, sulfamic acid, or any other reagent to kill excess nitric here because there won't be any excess nitric to kill. I've got everything pulled through the filter now. What we're going to do is transfer this solution into a uh, clean beaker and uh, do another precipitation. Get it ready. Get it melted up into a uh, some shot. Here's a beaker. We're gonna put it in, nice and clear. It's gonna be some high purity gold. never 
get tired of watching this happen. It is so cool. Uh, many of you may be asking why I didn't uh, denox the solution with uh, any reagents. And the answer is, I don't need to. There's no excess nitric in here to remove because I used incremental nitric acid dosing to dissolve the gold. Incremental nitric acid dosing is adding small amounts of nitric to the gold that's in hydrochloric acid. And uh, what I can do is carefully control the amount of nitric going into the reaction and add just enough nitric acid to just dissolve all the gold. So there's no need to denox this solution uh, because there's no excess nitric in it to be removed. There's our familiar foam. I think we're at the end now. All right, let's do a stannous chloride test here. I've got some uh, filters, pieces of filter paper cut up. Stick it on the well. I don't need to. I can just dip it right in with my hand here, and we're going to see if we got all the gold out of the solution yet. And no, we do not. Still have gold in solution. There is a ton of gold in there. Gold powder is filled up to this level right now. So what I'm going to have to do is continue to add some sodium metal bisulfite until get all the gold precipitated. It's hard to see at the beginning, but as the gold powder settles, you'll be able to see the level of gold powder accumulating in the bottom of the beaker. I'm gonna set the gold back out of the way for a minute. What we're gonna do now is take a look at the silver that we got from the gold filled scrap. Got a tube of water here. Down here, I've got a uh, waste bucket set up. So now, what I'm going to do is siphon off the uh, waste solution from both of these beakers, and we're going to take a look at uh, the silver that we recovered. Distilled rinse water that came from my silver cell clean out. It's gonna have a little bit of silver in it. What I'll do is uh, just cover these pieces of copper with this water, and a little bit of silver will come out of solution from this uh, 
There's a little bit of silver in this water that I'm pouring into the copper right now. As I said, I do not want the copper exposed to the air. It'll form a green copper oxide if you leave it out in the air. All right, I'm gonna take, move this out of the way now. And now what we'll do is I'm gonna transfer the silver that we recovered from this process into this uh, jar here so we can take a look and see what we got. precipitated into this temporary container this is the uh, waste that we poured off from the first precipitation if you remember correctly it had a little bit of uh, a little bit of platinum group metals in it so this will go in the stock pot let's check the uh, let's check this solution here and see if we've got any uh, PGMs in this one as well. It doesn't make any difference. It's going into this uh, into this waste container either way. I don't see a whole lot of color change there. But that's okay. We're going to pour it off now into this waste container and get our pure gold out of here. A little bit of the gold might come over with this pour and that's okay. We'll recover it later from the stock pot. For those who don't know, the stock pot is a, a bucket full of copper. Any traces of precious metals in these waste solutions uh, get added to the bucket called the stock pot with copper in it and the traces of precious metals will cement out as a black powder onto the copper in the stock pot and then we can do a recovery to get the metals back out of there in a nice little cake for us there. All right, now we're gonna do a, uh, a rinse of our gold powder with some hydrochloric acid. I'm just gonna pour it right on the gold powder and then swirl it around a little bit. Many small rinses are better than one large rinse. That 
settle out for a minute. Here's our pure gold. What I'm going to do now is uh, pour off this rinse water, or this rinse acid, I should say. This is hydrochloric acid that I used to rinse the gold off. here's our pure gold from our gold filled scrap so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour this water off and then we're gonna rinse it a little bit here with some hot water and then I'm gonna rinse it with a little bit of uh, distilled water get the little scum that forms when you dry distilled water or when you dry tap water on something it forms little spots and I'll rinse all that off I'll put it in this dish now here it is give it another quick rinse with distilled water
And now, I'm gonna take it over here, put it on the stove. I've got the stove running. We'll dry this out and get a weight on it. Here's the pure gold that we recovered from 1,272 grams of gold-filled scrap. Now we're gonna weigh it up and see what our yield is gonna be here. Zero that out. I was expecting about 40, but I think this could be way more than that. Here we go. Let's see what kind of yield we got from this gold filled scrap. 46. We got 46.1 grams of pure gold. All right, we're going to add to our stack here. Uh, somebody said, don't use the term stack because I sound like a, how do you say it? A bunker hugging right wing prepper. <laughs> Which I thought was kind of neat, man. So he said, don't say stack. So we're just gonna add it to our bottle instead of our stack here, carefully. Then we're gonna get a weight on the bottle see where we are with our gold hoard here all right that's everything this thing came out pretty neat looking it's like a little horn all right, i think i'm gonna have to break it off there though if i can to get it go down into the bottle it won't fit in the bottle how can i do this i might have to cut it There we go. We got everything in there now. Zero this out. The bottle and the lid weigh for 85 grams. We've got 662.9 grams. Six, six, two, point nine. Take away the weight of the bottle and the lid, minus 85. We've got 500. 77.9 grams of pure gold in this bottle. That would be, divide this by 31.1, got 18.5 troy ounces of pure gold. Just beautiful. All right, that'll conclude the video. Thanks for watching.